Hi, I'm Russ Shipton from MIDI and today I'll be addressing some of the common mistakes I see made by anglers when I'm out on the bank. One mistake I see quite regularly is people try to fish too many different venues when they're starting out in matches. What they should be doing is concentrating on two or three venues that are ones they like, the styles of fishing they like, and then they can try to perfect those skills for those particular venues. If you keep going to, regularly to the same few venues, you're going to get to know the regular anglers that do well at these venues, and once you get to know them, you, you can ask some questions, and that's what you must do. Keep asking questions. How did they fish? How did they catch? How did they do well, what do they feed, and then build up a picture of those venues, and that leads on to another thing of planning your match. Another good idea is to keep records of your results and other people's results who've done well and what they caught on and how they fed. And that way you build up a picture, and over some period of time, you'll get a plan together of what works at what particular time of year at those venues. Another thing that I see is people don't seem to plan well enough for their matches. And this is a big part of matches. So that's what you need to do. Make a plan built up with knowledge of what you've gained from going and also from your records that you keep from what other people have done. I don't mean you should be copying them, but you can take from them what good weights they've got from whatever feed they used. So the baits might be what you take from it. Don't try and copy people though, fish your own matches and fish to your own strengths. Whatever you're particularly good at, you keep going at that type of fishing. Don't you, if somebody wins using the methods to, to an island and you can't cast very well, it's not worth you trying to keep casting out there until you've learned how to do it. But you might be able to use the baits that you was using if you find out afterwards on another day. So that's what I mean by planning. One thing that you must concentrate on is having the right kit for the job that you want to be doing on the day. Now as an example of this, today I'm fishing a method feeder. It's a short truck to an island and this is the new Cortex 11 foot I've gone for today. And I've coupled that up with the GFD uh, 4000 reel. Now, Everyone picks rods and reels, but these coupled together, it's a very light reel on a very light rod, aids casting. But if you look closely at the reel, it's spooled right up to the edge of the spool. That really helps with casting. If you use a short rod for a short chuck, that's great. But today, the reason I'm doing that is because there's an island over there and there's overhanging trees. So I need a shorter rod to keep it lower. But I could fish shorter rods than this 11 foot one, but today my swim is cut back. And so I've got reeds that are sticking out probably three or four meters. So I need a little bit extra length in case they're trying to get down the edge when I hook them and bring them over this side. So you must think about it before you decide what you're going to be using and that's why I say the right kit for the right job. I think 90% of anglers have either made this mistake or have just not done it. Tying back your keep nets is, if it's allowed at the venues and in the competitions you're in, is a big thing in match fishing. It can stop the nets wafting out and completely muck up your short line. So it's a real good thing and very easy to do because nearly all these keep nets these days have little hooks on the end where you can just hook a bungee through and then pull it back to the edge of the bank. You've obviously got to make sure there's enough water in it for the fish to survive properly. I tie my nets back because it creates a bit of a feature and you can fish just over the front of those and fish come right in close in the edge, but it's a barrier for they can't get behind. So it's a good way of catching fish in these commercial fisheries.
When you're fishing on a venue where it's got plenty of silt and you plumb up gently at the start, that's great. But if you're, especially F1 fishing, they root around on your feed that's gone in the silt and they dig out a bit of a hole. And so you'll be, the float will be going under and you're thinking, is it taking on water? But no, your bait's sinking down more. And what people seem not to do is just re-plumb up after they've had a few fish because they've got to keep checking that they're just at the right depth that they want to be fishing. So just go back out there, re-plumb, takes a few seconds and you're back, you're not foul hooking and you're back fishing properly. A really big part of match fishing is your feeding and it's a very, very difficult part of it. But if you just look at it basically, there's four things you need to do. You need to decide in your planning really what you're going to feed and that comes out of your research you've done, when you're going to feed it, how much you're going to feed and how you're actually going to introduce that feed into your swim. There's many variations on that and there's no way I can actually tell you the right way to do it for your venues. But if you actually start thinking about it and introducing it into your plan beforehand, you can only improve your angling. And just to give you an example of what I'm actually talking about is today I'm feeding micros through a pot. Just a few micros, lowering in my um, bait, getting a few bites, great. And then after a while, just didn't work. Just kept getting little tiny skimmers, no good. So after then, changed the way I'm feeding and I squeezed it into a ball to get it down quick. So it's then on the bottom. And this is what I mean. How much you feed, when you feed it, and how you introduce it are big parts to it. So you can change what you're doing. If you're fishing on silty bottom in the edge and it's ground bait you're putting in, so you don't have to make it into a ball, you can just put it in loose so it lays on the silk. But you don't want to be doing that into deeper water, and spread out too much. But there's all these things to think about, and that's what it is. The thinking angler is the better angler. Thanks for watching. If you like the videos, then please like and subscribe to the Midi Match Range YouTube channel. And hope to see you on the bank sometime soon.